The Reggae Princess is joining me tonight. We're live on Melody Monday. Chris Ivy is going to be joining me for her exclusive interview live to air here on the Roots Reggae Hub. Big tune by Chris Ivy. tuned in on the radio you're in the right place if you're tuned in here on the gram even better join the conversation tonight live All right, let me check your levels. I've been playing your track here on the radio. The vibe is so nice. Your voice is beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. How are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling good. I'm excited. All right. I know we're going to have so much fun. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. We have a lot to talk about because, Lots. you know, I'm so excited to discover you. You're such a young and vibrant talent. Thank you. Thank you. And we've coined you, you know, the princess of reggae music here in Canada. Yes. Which is a, <laughs> such a crown, you know, a tiara to wear. Yes. Um, on <laughs> you're beautiful okay so we're gonna we're gonna get started we're gonna get right into it so for anyone tuned in on the radio anyone tuned in here joining the live right now for people that has are only hearing you for the first time hearing your track for the first time make it to the top we're gonna talk about it introduce yourself in your own words who is paris ivy so great Greetings, everyone. My name is Paris Ivy. I am a reggae recording artist, singer, songwriter from Montreal, Canada. I'm 20 years old. Um, I have the aspiration to just sing reggae music and to also influence future generations with positive conscious lyrics. Wow, that is awesome. <laughs> conscious lyrics. And you know, the younger generation, you know, I feel like there's so much new things going on compared to, you know, when I was your age, you know, the, the way that you're raised on social media and the influences coming from all these different angles mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to stay true to yourself is so important. And it seems like you're very grounded in who you are and how you want to represent in the world and especially through your arts through reggae music so let's start at the roots and foundations <laughs> tell me about your childhood growing up i know you're still young but tell me who raised you who influenced those early years so i have to big up mommy for that <laughs> i have to big up mommy mommy is the reason why i am who i am today so i have to give her all the big ups and the most high of course um my childhood has always been rooted in music so as you know, we always play music when it's time to clean or to cook. Music is always there somewhere. So I always heard it and I knew I had a calling for it. I was always drawn and intrigued towards it. So that's where it really started to develop. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So big up to the mom dukes, you know, probably <laughs> cooking and cleaning, yeah. or, you know, playing some of the conscious <laughs> tunes. So you're raised in, in that awareness. So big up to mom. Yes. And what inspired you to start your musical journey at such a young age? Mm -hmm. uh the age of 15 right correct so funny enough um i was a bit reserved about singing growing up and so i surprised my mom for mother's day that year and i did a cover to christopher martin's mama and i recorded it i put it on the ipad and then i had the voice memo and i, th I did a whole setup <laughs> and i played it for her and she looked at me and she said paris you can't sing <laughs> and then from there it just everything just kept going up from there and it was it was beautiful yeah <laughs> yeah and are you still based in montreal yeah. are you still living there yes i'm um, born in toronto actually and i moved here when i was two years old wow okay so you're fluent you're fully bilingual Correct. i'm assuming 
correct. Je parle français aussi. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, your vocals have been described as ethereal, you know, this, this sound that comes out of you is, is like a bird, is like a songstress, something elegant coming through you. Um, it's very unique. So for someone who's never heard your, your voice before, uh, tell me what might have influenced it and uh, your style, your tone. Where does, where does that come from? So my style and my tone, I would say it comes from the legends. So the Dennis Browns, the Garnet Silk, Barrington Levy, Jacob Miller, Woodrow Banton. So all of those people, as well as the newer generation in reggae, like Leela I.K. and Jazzy Lees. Those are people that I look up to and I respect so much. Um, and I take elements from them and I try to intertwine it and make it my own in a way. Yes. Yeah. And I heard I, I shared your, your Jazzy Lees stream cover. You did a great job. I was almost thinking like, is this Jazzy Lees? Because <laughs> You know, we've talked and, and we had an interview, I think it was last year, um, but she is, she is definitely a star. And I, I was listening to your cover and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's, it sounds almost identical um, to her, but in your own, in, a, in, a, in your own version of it. So you did a really good job on that cover and that's why I had to share it. Um, really, really great job. And big up to all the Empress, the Lila Ikea, Jazzle, everyone doing their thing in reggae music representing for the, you know, the Empress, them doing their thing. I love to see it. And I love to see you. Um, you said you were, you know, you're used to doing some events such as Jamaica Day, Canada Day, and we're in festival season, as you know, it comes <laughs> and goes quickly here, Especially here Canada. in Canada. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the cold, you know. Yeah. So which performance for you has mo been most memorable and why? So all of them were memorable in some way, but the one that sticks out to me the most, I would say is the Belmont. I did it recently in May on the 19th. And I mean, once I got on that stage, it felt like something came over me. It was so profound and I, I, I was on a different high. <laughs> Like in my song, I was on a high, I was on cloud nine. So that experience really made me understand what many artists talk about when they say the alter ego and taking on this other persona. And it's like an outer body experience. It was out of this world. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to see you on the <laughs> stage, you know, in person and, you know, to see how do you, how do you make an effort to really connect with the audience when you're on stage is there anything that you do mm -hmm. um to to really connect with the audience do you, do you look at them or do you look past them because everyone's different you know the nerves right are there um so how do you push past that and connect with the audience i, I would say the way i connect with the audience at times i do get nervous when i look at them but i try to look at them and also i wave to them or i smile at them mm -hmm. to make them know that i acknowledge them or i lean in a bit just to give them a quick hail up, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a great strategy. And I'm sure it, it makes the nerves just melt away. Yeah. Um, we're here to talk about your single, mm -hmm. Make It To The Top. I mean, the track is a beautiful track. I want to talk about your creative process with this track. What came first for you, the rhythm or the lyrics? The lyrics. Okay. The lyrics. Funny enough, I wrote that song within 30 minutes. So it just poured out of me. I heard the rhythm and I was like, yes, the Lord, my savior told me. <laughs> Ooh, there she goes, the song says, okay, a little acapella vibes here, yes. live on the radio. Big up everybody tuned in, cause this is a treat right here. So the rhythm, the lyrics came first mm -hmm. and then the rhythm, right? So, all right. all right. So typically, you know, when you're, when you're blending the rhythm and the, and the lyrics and how do you balance those elements and are, are, do you write a lot of songs or do you just, like you said, it comes to you um, and then you perform it? How, how does that work? So for Make It To The Top specifically, I want to big up White Blacks. He is the producer for that rhythm. He killed it killed it killed it killed it um so for that track that was all him i have to big him up for that for other songs i usually go on youtube vibe out a bit and i just do a little freestyle or i write down something that comes to me and then from there it just pours out of me yeah Ooh, i love that you're <laughs> this gorgeous shining star i'm so happy to discover you i'm so happy to share you know this track with the world and everybody who's tuned in on the radio you know what to do you love the track you hear the track 
you go to the website, rootsreakhub.com, and you request the track. The more the listeners request these tracks, the more they get played. So if you love it, make it to the top, which, I mean, the shining star, her voice speaks for itself. You heard it right there, acapella. Make sure you go to the website, request this track. Big up White Blacks. Yes. Sir, because, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm so impressed by him. The King is amazing. He's just recently sent me some more music as well, and I was listening to it. I was like, what? And I get a lot of submissions and, you know, the what the quality that he's putting out is just on uh, next level. Crazy. So big up, big up white black. Oh my God. He's so talented. <laughs> I'm so happy you guys are working together because, I mean, this is this is a magic um, mm -hmm. elements putting together here. So you've cited legends, you know, Dennis Brown, Garnet Silk, Budja Banton. Um, have you really studied their careers and, and how is that maybe going to shape your personal career? going forward because you I mean the world is your oyster correct correct i love the way you put that i do take a lot of inspiration from them um vocally i study the way they sing and as well as their stage presence like i spend hours watching their live performances and just mm -hmm. especially dennis brown he my mom is crazy about him and i know why because he is such an entertainer yes yeah yes. or he was such uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, still still is living on. I I really do believe our like reggae legends they live on. Forever. You know, through through artists like you, really taking them and and looking at them as these the icons that they that they are, mm -hmm. and you know, kind of weaving that into your own style and making it your own. So big up yourself for doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what challenges have you faced? Because you know, you're a young artist starting out a reggae music industry. Have you have you even come across any challenges at this point? And if so, how have you overcome them? Yes, I have. To answer your question, yes. There were a few naysayers in the beginning, around the age of 15. Um, the way I overcame it, I just took the criticism and I use it as fuel to motivate me to go even harder. Yeah. All right, so take it, take it, take the constructive criticism, even if it hurts, mm -hmm. you know, because that can be your fuel oh, yeah. that might light that fire under you. And I'm so glad the naysayers, you pushed them aside <laughs> because I mean, the proof is in the pudding right here tonight mm -hmm. with Make It to the Top. Yeah. And I'm so excited to see what more you have in store for us. I mean, your songs have been played on various radio stations, not 90.3 FM, 88.5, and you know, big up all this, the radio stations yeah. that support our local talent across Canada mm -hmm. and internationally as well. Um, the big up all the radio stations because it's so important. How did you feel that first time when you heard your track play? Like, what, what happened inside you? <laughs> I didn't know how to feel. It felt unreal. I was like, is this me? <laughs> is this really me on the radio? I was screaming like crazy. It was, it was so beautiful. I loved it. Oh. I loved it. Yeah, and I'm really honored, and I want to big up all the radio stations that have been playing my music all throughout these last few months since I released the song. I'm so honored, and I'm so happy. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. Big up all my, <laughs> my fellow radio station gurus, all the disc jockeys, all the, the radio personalities. Yeah. I'm, I'm so happy to um, ha be in such, you know, high regard with other people that just really, really take our, our artists and push them to the next level. Because without the radio station, with the DJs playing your music, nobody will hear it. So we need all of you, <laughs> us, we need producers, we need DJs, all of you, Ooh. radio hosts, we need all of you. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work, Definitely. you know? So, um, <laughs> how is it with your, um, with your career now? Is your mom involved with helping push your career? Are you, are you going to be doing this uh, independently for a while? Like, what is the plan to market yourself? Have you thought about that? Yes, mommy is definitely involved. We're like this. <laughs> so we're like, so yes, it's all the way to the top, me and her. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Um, you know, it's so important to have a team. And, and you have White Blacks, too, as your producer. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be working with other producers, but you're in good hands with him. And, you know, I would love to hear that your mom is hands-on as well to protect you and to, and to guide you through an industry that can be, you know, that can be sometimes hard to maneuver if you don't, if you don't know. So I'm glad she's she's hands on with you and anything you need. Of course, from my end, feel free to reach out. I will. Anything your mama wants to reach out, 
you know, um, mm -hmm. similar to with Cairo and his mom, I love that I've seen him and his parents, how close they are. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, everywhere I see him, I see his parents. So it's so important. So I'm glad your mother is there um, doing her thing right alongside <laughs> you. That's awesome. I see you have, uh, you know, done a lot of fundraising events too. How important yeah. is that to you to choose certain, you know, causes that maybe touch your heart? Mm -hmm. And um, why is that an important part in your career as well to be able to showcase yourself and, and be involved in in fundraising of of your choice um i think it has the reason why i want to be involved in it because for one it touches home my grandmother passed from breast cancer so it definitely touches home but also because i want to make a difference i want to show that young people can be conscious can be positive can be uplifting and can make a difference as well Oh, that's beautiful. And I'm, I'm sorry to hear, you know, so many people's families are touched by cancer. Mm -hmm. um, I myself have lost an aunt through, of breast cancer. So it's such an, it's, it's, it's hard and it's such an important cause. So, you know, my hat, my hat goes off to you and for anyone that can, um, can donate, look on your page, look at the fundraisers that you're involved in and to keep an eye on you know, the causes that you're supporting and that that's a huge cause. So, you know, I'm so glad you chose to support these causes through your music. Yes, definitely. I always will. <laughs> always. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have any rituals or routines that help you get into the zone um, when you're performing music or when you're creating writing music? Is there anything that you go through um, do you sit in nature? Do you, you know, meditate? There's just so many different things that you can think of. I'm just throwing things out at you here, but from your own words, is, is there a kind of a structure that you go through before you perform or before you sit down and create new music? I do. I recharge in nature. Funny enough, you mentioned I do recharge in nature. I go, I sit down, I reason with the most high, and then I come back, I come in my room, you know my home studio and then i mash it up <laughs> i mash oh, up the thing <laughs> i love that i love that and you're you know you're comfortable in your own home you have your own yeah. setup yeah. and sometimes you know those are the best places to create the magic oh, yeah. so big up everybody i see a lot of the comments coming in yeah. big up i'm thank you for all the, the love everybody and i see mommy in the comments oh, too the time, time. <laughs> Yes, Tata. Tam Tam, big up yourself, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Big up everybody who's tuned in here. If you have any questions, you know, I always take questions from the Instagram family here. So if you do have questions for Paris Ivy, drop them in the little question box on the right hand bottom of your screen. I will source out the ones that are good. <laughs> and I will not forget you guys because I always like to have you involved and in, in interactive and to join the conversation here live on the gram so big up yourself if you are here and you do have a question for paris ivy drop it on the bottom of your screen all right all right i'm gonna ask you a few other questions <laughs> tell me about uh you know your cultural roots and experimenting with different sounds and genres do you ever think that you'll experiment with different genres there's a lot of fusion going on we're hearing you know reggae and afro beats and so many different artists from different genres collaborating. Do you ever have that? Do you have that in mind uh, for yourself? And if you do, um, how do you think you're going to remain grounded in your cultural roots while doing so? Okay. Uh, yes, to answer your question, yes. I think especially because I'm from Montreal, there's so many cultures mm -hmm. around me. So I am definitely going to incorporate reggae with a bit of a modern twist to it. Um, I think I'll main true by keeping the foundation in in the reggae, that element mm -hmm. present, and then just adding a little bit of a fusion. So, you know, bring in more people. <laughs> okay. And will you, will you be doing any tracks in French? Because I yes. know a lot of... Yes, yes, oh. yes. 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 Okay, I've connected with a lot of French reggae artists because we play reggae music from around the world and even artists in Quebec and Montreal mm -hmm. um, I've connected with and you know supported their album launches and things like this and I love to hear you know bilingual artists representing the you know the, the different languages that they speak it's awesome so you know keep that in mind as well if you release something in French and English send me both I versions because we have a huge, huge following in, in France and in other 
French speaking countries in Africa and whatnot. So, you know, make sure you, you keep me posted on all the releases, no matter the no matter the language, right? Okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see someone asking a question. Any collabs coming up? Have you thought of anybody that you want to collab with? Any other artists? Yes, a few reggae artists I want to collab with, like Chronix, Lula Ik, Jazzy Lee's, mm -hmm. um, this is like Capleton. There's a long list. There's a huge list. Huge list. Crossing finger. Right. One day. One day. Very soon. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. That sounds like a plan i would love mm -hmm. to see you collaborate with all the artists you just mentioned mm -hmm. um and collaborations are so important i think and it really does set the tone for you know in your network mm -hmm. who you're connected to who you can work with and it's always good to put out collaborations especially on albums mm -hmm. coming up i do have Thank a you for collab that. i do have a collab i'm gonna bust a little a little secret i do have a collab on the way with white blacks i'm not gonna say the name but stimulin is on it oh Jamizel is on it so stay tuned yes, it's coming. Oh, oh, okay <laughs> it's so coming. a collab is in the works coming. did you guys hear that i did you guys hear that on the radio <laughs> all right so we got a little bit of the tea tonight from paris mm -hmm. herself the princess mm -hmm. is just telling us that there's a collab <laughs> coming up so you guys got to keep your eyes locked your ears tuned in and uh make sure you follow paris on all her instagram and other channels uh, snapchat as well right tiktok, TikTok as well TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Right. <laughs> tiktok and you'll find her on the instagram um the paris ivy so make sure you keep it locked for all of these releases coming up you've heard it here first on the roots reggae hub all right so we'll get to a couple more questions okay Tell me, how do you envision the future of reggae music? Um, you know, things have evolved, as you know. You know, there's, there's, the sound is changing. Um, the way things are produced is changing. Um, you know, we're in the digital age, mm -hmm. so to speak. And there's even AI I know. coming into play so now <laughs> with, with the creation of music. So, how you're, you're, you know, you're, you've got a young mind, and you, you're, you're. You can give me an opinion on that that I think would speak volumes because you you're raised in this new age. What do you think uh, is the future for our game music, and how do you see the evolution playing out, and what part do you play in the evolution of reggae music? I think that reggae music will remain influential, and I think over the years as time progresses, it'll become even more influential. Mm -hmm. And I think more young people will start to gravitate towards that consciousness because there's this um, need, this desire for conscious lyrics. Um, and I think my role would be to heal, to educate, you know, I think that's my role. I I'd be a part of the evolution. <laughs> yes, you are. You are a part of it. Oh, that makes me so happy just to think about that. Um, and I, I think you're, you're very right about that. I do believe that reggae music remains so influential. Mm -hmm. We see it in the fact that, you know, we have 228 countries tuning in each and every week um, on the station. And that, it, that speaks for itself, too. And, like, that is, that is I didn't expect that. Um, so it's a worldwide movement, reggae music. And we see it being adopted in so many different cultures and so many different places, diff different races you know, of people. So it's it's a beautiful thing. So I agree. And I love to see that you're a part of the evolution of reggae music. <laughs> Thank you. So I asked this question to everybody that comes on my show, mm -hmm. this question everybody gets, because it's a deep question. And I think everyone's opinion on destiny is different. Mm -hmm. So I love to hear, you know, your young mind, your young and fresh mind, what is your perspective on destiny? Do you believe that we control our own destiny we're in full control and we can take every matter into our own hand own hands or do you feel like our destiny is pre-planned sort of laid out mapped out for us before we come into this human experience beautiful question i believe that our destiny is predetermined by the most high i think we come into this world on a mission and no matter how many blockages we get, roadblocks, all these different things, I think that at the end of the day, God will align everything so that we are able to fulfill that purpose. Mm -hmm. 
beautiful wise <laughs> one uh this you know i'm so i'm so i feel so blessed to be you know hearing you speak you're so intelligent so flu you know you're you speak so fluently and i love that about you and thank you for your thoughts on destiny all right we have a few questions coming in mm-hmm. big up reggae addiction in the house all right big up my friends reggae addiction do you have any upcoming live performances scheduled people want to see you live not at the moment but hopefully in the works Mm -hmm. hopefully in the works i do have a carry mass in montreal coming up it's not a performance but it's a beauty miss beauty caribbean pageant are you in the pageant yeah i'm representing miss jamaica Yes, yes. Um, I, I, you already win in my book. You're, you don't even need to walk the. You already win. Uh, representing for Jamaica, the land I love, the land we love. Oh, yes, this is, yes, yes. This is beautiful. I'm very, I'm very excited about that. That's oh, what. awesome. When is this pageant taking place? Ah, uh, it's the 22nd of June. Okay. So this is right around the corner. So got, I'm sure you got your dress. Like, you sure you yeah. got your change of outfits. Yeah. Everything is ready. Yep. Big up to you. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. So that is, that's a great question. Thank you, Reggae Addiction. I'm sure people want to see you here in Toronto. I would love to go back home because it's my second, or my first home. Montreal is my second home. <laughs> yes. yes. You know, we do a lot of events here. And Montreal has a lot of events, too. Like, the, I love the jazz festival there. They know they have a lot of reggae festivals, too. Um, but I'm, I'm not surprised we got that question because, of course, people want to see you live, your beautiful voice live. Thank you. Thank you. So what's the best advice you've ever received? Ooh. I would say from Mommy, and she told me, that after every storm there's a calm so when there's a storm just humble yourself relax be still things will work out <laughs> yeah right. and i always keep that no, no matter what and I'm, I'm so glad you and your mom are so close and she's you know she's really giving you the right advice um and every disappointment is for an appointment my great grandma used to tell me that all the time okay. So, you know, hold steady, hold steady, keep the faith mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, keep trotting on in your destiny uh, for sure. Mm-hmm. If you could time travel anywhere, anytime in the past, mm-hmm. present or future, where would you be and what would you be doing? Would you be alone or would you be with somebody else? Doing so, it? I would time travel with mommy and I would take her to see Dennis Brown because that's her favorite artist. I would take her to see Dennis Brown in his prime, go to the concert, talk with him, reason, get the teachings, and then time travel back. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I I love that. Big up to Mumsy again. You guys are on a journey. Yeah. That would be excellent. I see some more questions coming in. Big up Lady Sharon joining us tonight. What's your musical experience in Toronto as compared to Montreal? What brought you to Montreal? Okay, so what brought me to Montreal, I came here at a young age. My mom decided to move here when I was young, so I grew up here. So I haven't had the chance to perform in Toronto as yet, Mm -hmm. but I would love I would love to. All right, that answers our question, Lady (laughs) Sharon. So as a young child, that really wasn't your decision. That just was meant to be. That was part of your destiny right there. (laughs) And we can't wait to have you home in Toronto for sure. That's a great question. Thank you, Lady Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. And I see another question from Joy Peer. Big up yourself, Joy. Always asking a great question every week. Have you had any experiences in nature with magical things happening? So I guess she's referring to you saying, you know, you ground yourself in nature and you, you find yourself calming there. Has mm-hmm. anything magical, so to speak, happened to you when you are, you know, at one with nature? I wouldn't say necessarily magical, but I, it does bring me a lot of peace. Mm, it does bring me a lot magical. of peace. It, peace, it, peace is so, yeah. <laughs> peace is so important. Yeah. Peace of mind. Yeah. Um, for me is one thing um, as a simplicity seeker I love nature 
Um, yeah, so that's a great question. Thank you, Joy. That's, that's a really, <laughs> really good question. That's an interesting question. Thank yeah. you. All right. I have another question. I have to take this one because this one is from King White Blacks. Ooh! <laughs> Where is your favorite place in Jamaica and how does that place inspire your music? Have you been to Jamaica? Yes, Ooh. many times. Ooh, many okay. Times. <laughs> Tell me your favorite place and why. I'm going to be a bit biased. I'll say my parish. I'll say St. Thomas. <laughs> Big up St. Thomas. St. Thomas, St. Thomas. Just the sea, the people, the vibes. Definitely St. Thomas. Yeah. Okay. And how does that place inspire you? I, I, how does it inspire your music when you travel there? Do you ever go to Jamaica and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so inspired right now to just continue in, in my journey um, in reggae music? Yeah, because there's music everywhere. You can't go anywhere in Jamaica without hearing music. Mm -hmm. I haven't been in a few years, unfortunately, because of COVID, but the last time I was there, the vibes was amazing. Yeah. Vibes, yes. I would love, I would love to go to Jamaica right now as we speak, because we're not getting much of a summer. I don't know. I know Montreal, I know Montreal is warmer than Toronto because I was in Montreal mm -hmm. last week and it was 30 degrees and I was like, what the, I was like, how are we still at 14 degrees? Usually it's and, the opposite. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. I was just in Montreal for a pitch and I didn't understand why it was so hot and Toronto is so cold. Like even today it's freezing so cold. Shout out to all my Montreal people. You guys are getting all the good weather. Please, yes. please send some over here. Sending it all the sun. <laughs> I, need I need it. I need it. Thanks for all those awesome questions, guys. That, that's so amazing. Um, I bless up everybody that always, you know, tunes in to ask great questions. Tell me something about you that people do not know and would never in a million years guess. I would say I'm a painter, so I paint acrylic and oil. Wow. Yes. <laughs> you are multi-talented. Oh, my gosh. So do you do that for fun, or are you, like, going to full-fledged, like, sell your art? Are you going to make, you know, a journey out of it in that way? I do it for fun. I enjoy it. I'm open to it, selling it at some point, but I just do it for fun. Yeah. If I find it very liberating. It's nice. Yes. Yeah. Of course, that's another artistic outlet for you, and um, beautiful. I, I love that you do that, and um, you definitely should share some of it, some of your artwork. Yeah. Um, I would love <laughs> to see that. So, any new projects coming up? You told us about the collab. Any work EP in the works, or maybe an album that you're, you might be working on? Tell us what's next for Paris Ivy. What's next for Paris Ivy? I have a single coming out very soon called Overcome. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it'll, it'll resonate with a lot of people. It's about overcoming obstacles and to stay grounded and focused despite chaos. And I do have a, an album in the works. So stay tuned. <laughs> coming soon, coming very soon. Awesome. I love that. I love that you're working and, you know, getting your art out and, and you're following your destiny. Mm -hmm. um, it's so important to, you know, stay true to yourself and, and do what makes you happy because, you know, the life is too short uh, to do anything else. And when you're doing what makes you happy, you're on the right path. Everything, you know, that your heart's desires, you can achieve. So, you know, pick up yourself for that um before i let you go i wanted to talk about the message in the music for your single make it to the top what is the message here what do you want people to know and what do you want people to feel when they listen to this single i want people to just go for their dreams i want for, like when they hear it to just say to themselves i can do anything i can make it to the top that's what i want them to keep yeah oh it's beautiful all right, everybody who's tuned in on the radio, pick up yourself. I'm going to play this track again. I'm going to pull up on the track for those <laughs> of you that didn't hear it on the intro. Any last shout outs, words of wisdom, work, and also where can people find you? Spell it out for people. So if you want to listen to Make It to the Top, you can find it on all streaming platforms. 
My name is Paris Ivy, so P A R I S, like the city, I V I V Y. My Instagram is the Paris Ivy, so T H E P A R I S I V Y, as well as my TikTok. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in to Melody Mondays each and every single week. I will be back next week with another artist. And thank you, Paris, for joining me. It has been a pleasure, pleasure getting to know your beautiful soul. And keep me posted on all your music. Make sure. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Thank you so much. I had so much fun. <laughs> Blessed love, everybody. Have a great night. I'm Shana McCullough signing out. Give thanks. And Give one thanks. love, everybody. One love. Bye. <laughs> I will be back next.